and here we are, part one of the lower extremity muscles, and we're starting with the table here on page uh, 363, just the way you like it. And um, I'm indicating here with the big letter A, this is anterior compartment. I'm taking everything anterior compartment or medial or posterior compartment of the thigh. Now before I get here, I have to do the hip muscles. So please forgive me, I'm going to flip a couple pages here in order to get to the hip muscles. Okay, so we're going to begin actually with this view here in which we have gluteal outflow. So the gluteus nerve is going to innervate um, four muscles. Okay, one, two, three, four. And who are those uh, muscles? Those muscles are gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and one more, um, let's see here, tensor fasciolata. There we go. So all four of these appear on this one page, 366, and we have over here uh, gluteal nerves. Worry not whether they are superior or inferior, only that they are all gluteal outflow. So we have four muscles. Now as an erect animal, it looks different on us than it does on a four-legged animal. So you'll just have to deal with the idea here that we're actually moving from uniaxial at the spine to biaxial on the lower extremity. And who does that for us truly is gluteus maximus, just the way we like it. And notice that we have this diagonal flow of fascicles going from the sacrum and we're going out to the iliotibial uh, tract right here. The uh, Some people call it the IT band, but it's the real name is iliotibial tract. It's a connective tissue. It is a tendon, essentially. Very, very long, flat, sort of an aponeurosis tendon. It covers the surface thinly. You can penetrate it with a needle. All right, so if you're giving yourself a diabetic shot of insulin, you could go through there. I would recommend you actually go more medially in the direct middle of the anterior, but you could get through here. Anyways, so this muscle right here, gluteus maximus, is exerting force on the tibia. This comes all the way down to the tibia. Are you with me on that? That's a huge amount of, uh, how shall I say, geography. Okay, and uh, let's come over here and take a look at this. We have the um, uh, the dorsal ilium, we have the sacrum, a lot of coccyx going on there in terms of uh, origins of the maximus. And we're going to go through the gluteal to, to the gluteal tuberosity, which we don't see in this view. Uh, we do see the iliotibial band, okay? But a lot of sacrum and a lot of ilium in this. We actually have, here's the ilium part up here, here's the sacrum part down here all the way down to the tibia. Those are the two points of connection. And we're going to be um, the major extensor of the thigh. It's complex, it's powerful. Also, it's going to be a part of the complexity of moving to a uh, unit from uniaxial to biaxial stance. So this is important in ballet, in uh, every aspect of dance, really and in uh, gymnastics, as well as Tai Chi, all martial arts. Um, so the fact that you can stand, uh, yoga has postures specifically for standing. So this is an important detail. Okay, we flip the page and we come to this view here where we've transected the gluteus maximus and what we're left with also is a transected glu um, gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. So we're looking at these muscles here. These are coming straight down to the top of your femur, straight down. So the, what, the, what do they do for a living? They actually lift. When you're taking the next stride, in addition to putting your foot forward, you have to kind of lift up and um, so that you can swing this limb away from the ground. Okay, so you'll be putting pressure, pushing down on that side of the hip, lifting this side of the hip. These are lifting individuals right there. Okay, so gluteus uh, 
medius and minimus are what they're doing right there. And let's go back here to the text. Gluteus uh, medius origin is going to be pretty much on the gluteal lines of the ilium. Basically, you need to think ilium and then straight down by a short tendon uh, to the greater trochanter. The greater trochanter of the femur is that bump thing you have on the side of your femur. If your hands are full of groceries, two bags, and you can barely open the door, you're going to have to bump it open with the side of your hip. That's the greater trochanter that's doing that. Right? So going straight down. Okay? We have gluteal nerves here. We're going to lift. Okay? They say that it's abduction and medial rotation. It's really kind of lifting so you can swing. But there is a little bit of abduction involved. There's a little bit of medial rotation involved in the lift. Okay? So... What this is for is do not sag, right? You need to lift the foot off the ground. And the same goes for minimus, okay? So the same for minimus, also gluteus right there, just the way you like it. And then I'll complete the uh, gluteal nerves here with this guy, okay? We're going to come to this eventually, but uh, right now we're only going to look at this guy. Um, remember, here we have the iliotibial tract. Who's that way back there? Is gluteus maximus. Who's this right here coming on the side and slightly to the front? Is uh, going to be tensor fascia lata. Okay, not a huge muscle, but it is still innervated by gluteal nerve. And so now you have learned four muscles innervated by the gluteal nerve. Gluteus maximus, medius, minimus, and tensor fascia lata. Just the way you like it, it comes down right here to the iliotibial tract. And that completes the program on that nerve outflow to the muscles. Okay, then we're going to come over here and we're going to go deep to these muscles. And we're going to learn a bunch of one, two, three, four, five lateral rotators of the hip. Let's look at these now. We have um, coming just to this direction. We have one right here, which is piriformis. We have two right here, which is superior gemulus. The next one is obturator internus. The next one is inferior gemulus. And the fifth one right here is obturator femoris. Collectively, what do they all have in common is that they are lateral rotators of the hip. Okay, spelled lateral rotators, slightly smudged, sorry about that, lateral rotators of the hip. What are they doing? They're swinging things this way. Right, so that means if you're, this is the back and the toe is pointing out front, that means the toe is going to go laterally this way. That's a lateral rotation of the hip. Okay, that's what they do for a living and that's what you need to know about them. Okay, and we're now complete with this view, except for one little detail.